Today on Gearbox, we're looking at the Roland V800 HD Vision Switcher. Now, John, mm. interesting. This is kind of a hybrid of sorts. Yeah, it, it sits in the market that would normally be occupied by a, a switcher scalar device, the sort of things that we've come to know in the live production industry. But it looks but and feels it has It has like the a production form factor switcher. of the production switcher. In fact, e exactly the same look and feel that we've had ever since like the mid-70s with um, program and preset buttons here coming through to a t-bar um, select your wipes select your downstream key off you go so anybody who's used that type of switcher is going to be very comfortable with this device yeah and indeed look it, it's pretty easy to actually get this thing up and running out of the box you mm. know you, you've got essentially two banks of inputs your first four inputs you can choose each input individually between a composite or a 3g HD mm. or SD SDI signal mm. That was so an outfall, wasn't it? It was, and I got it out. But but essentially, essentially, your first four inputs, composite or SDI, and any combination of that up to four. Yeah, and then your second bank of four is HDMI or DVI, and you can do DVI A or D. Mm. So there's Analog a couple of choices or, there, or digital. So and they're coming in through standard connectors. So you know you got to you got to. Uh, kit full of dongles, you, you're set there. Yeah, if you want to put a whole bunch of HDMI inputs in, you need little HDMI to DVI yeah. adapters, but that's sort of neither here nor there. But, but like think of this in terms of you could have four cameras or three cameras and a video playback device and four PCs and bang and you're off. Yeah, look, I think really w where this is designed to sit is it's designed to take the place of where previously we might have had you know various converters and glue boxes as mm -hmm. we've looked at to convert signals to a common format. This doesn't care. You can you can put just about anything and you can even put component in in fact as yeah. well and it uh, and it does color correction so so a as you come out of this you might be going to different projectors or different devices that have just slightly different colorimetry and you can make them look the same yeah and look I think that really the, the big thing is the scaling we've got a couple of SDI outputs we've got a couple of DVI or HDMI outputs mm. and we've also got a uh, a separately routable RGB component out which also has in tandem a standard def composite out so yeah. you could be routing you know one signal out of your SDI output in one aspect ratio and routing the same signal out in a different aspect um, from the RGB component so you could f potentially feed two different aspect devices and have your images appear correctly. Yeah, the interesting How thing is... How good is that? Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. You can infer, by the way, most of this just by looking at the, the back plane. So as you run down looking at the myriad of sockets that are on the back of this, it wouldn't take more than five or ten minutes, even without the instruction book, to work out what the gazintas and, and the gazouters are. Um, there's uh, MIDI in and out, uh, MIDI in and, and out through, so you can, be, you can be merging some signals, and you can use that to control downstream device, or indeed to have this controlled from an upstream device. So you can, in fact, on that note, you can, you can set it up such that when you cut on your cut row, it will do audio follows video. Or it will take the video in response to I yeah. don't know, somebody playing a keyboard if you really wanted to, to do that. Um, well, that's that's not actually as crazy as it sounds because a lot of acts have visualizations and stuff, and a sure. lot of that sort of stuff is MIDI triggered. And if you really wanted to, I mean, you could just dedicate you know your top octave of, of notes on a standard keyboard, you know, playing stuff that nobody's going to listen to. Camera, 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 exactly. camera. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it's also got RS232 input, so if you've got a more permanent installation or some specialized um, control application you can handle that pretty easily and it's got tally outs so you can go and turn on all those important lights that are terribly uh, terribly useful yeah and it's, it's red and, and the green cameras know that yeah. they've actually got yeah, something yeah. on and, and and whether or not it's popular you can do red and green tally so yeah. so your cut row for program gives you red tally output and your and preview and row gives you green tally yeah um, the other thing to mention is that it's also got a multi-viewer and that's like really important these days. Everybody's expecting you're going to have a flat panel screen for your uh, preview monitors, the, the individual source monitors and your, your program and your, your preview um, outputs. And can I just say, as, as a guy who's actually had to build a couple of facilities with flat screens and stuff, yeah. um, you know, commonly these things have external power supplies. You've got to mount them. Getting them all level is just a pain in the neck. Yeah. So if you have a way where you can just stick one filthy great big screen on the wall and have everything appear nicely 
nicely spaced out. And it doesn't even have thing. to be filthy big, of course. You, you might only have this much room and you could just be using a small LCD uh, screen. You know, just anything that's got HDMI in will act as your multi-viewer output. Yeah, well, that's true. You could actually build this into quite a nice little flyaway. You yeah. just have a flip-up screen which travels with it and um, yeah, you know, sure. a couple of playback devices maybe in the same rack. So yeah. in that regard, it's good. As much as we try and plan things in advance, you know, sometimes we go into situations in production environments where there are a lot of unknowns, whether that's you know screen types or client content, or whatever. Let's face it, that's pretty much every gig that you work on, isn't it? Well, yeah. not in a perfect world, but yeah, look, yeah. Let's, let's keep this within the bounds of reality, where we, we walk into a lot of unknowns. And I think if you're in that situation, having a box like this that will take, as you say, pretty much any source you can throw at it and let you manipulate it, scale it, whatever, and output a variety of options, I think you're you're in a pretty good place. Yeah, and, and very easy to use and very convenient and very comfortable for people who are used to using production switches. It's the uh, Roland V800 HD.